Hey guys, the topic you are going to see today is silly window syndrome and TCP data format. So in this video we will talk about what silly window syndrome is, the causes and solution to each cause and what TCP header format is, what are the headers, the flags and the option fields. So moving on to the topic silly window syndrome. So what is silly window syndrome? Silly window syndrome is a problem that arises due to a poor implementation of TCP. It degrades the TCP performance and makes the data transmitter extremely inefficient. It is named silly window syndrome because it causes the sender window size to shrink to a silly value of 1 byte. The window size shrinks to such an extent that the data being transmitted is smaller than the TCP header itself. There are two major causes. Cause 1. Sender window transmitting one byte of data repeatedly. Cause 2. Receiver window accepting one byte of data repeatedly. Cause 1. Sender window transmitting one byte of data repeatedly. Consider if only one byte of data is generated by an application. The, so, when we implement the TCP so poor, then this smaller segment of data will be transmitted. So then if every time uh, the application generates a byte of data, the window will transmit it. This makes the transmission process slow and inefficient. So how to solve it? So this problem is solved by Nagle's algorithm. The solution to the cause one is Nagle's algorithm which states that the sender should send only the first byte on receiving one byte of data from the application. So after sending the first byte it should buffer all the rest bytes until the sent byte is acknowledged. So after receiving the acknowledgement the sender should send the buffered data. So this process is repeated. Once that single byte of data is sent, it waits for acknowledgement and once it acknowledges, it sends all the buffered data. Cause 2. Receiver window accepting one byte of data repeatedly. So consider when the receiver is unable to process all the incoming data. So when it, it, when it is unable to process it, it will advertise only a small window size. So this process continues and the window space becomes smaller and smaller. A stage arises when it repeatedly advertises window size of 1 byte. So then this makes the receiving process inefficient. So how to solve this? The solution to this problem is clock's solution. The clock solution suggests that receivers should not send a window update for 1 byte. Receiver should wait until it has a decent amount of space available. So then only the receiver can advertise the window size to the sender and the sender will be able to send, uh, send the data of more than one byte. Moving on to the next topic, TCP header format. The TCP segment consists of a header and a data section. The header can range from 20 to 60 bytes. Typically, a header is 20 bytes. The remaining 40 bytes offer options. The header contains 10 mandatory fields and an optional extension field. The data section follows the header and is the payload data carried for the application. Shown here is the structure of the TCP header. So it consists of an header and followed by data. The header consists of source port, destination port, sequence number, acknowledgement number, header length, reserved bits, window size, checksum, urgent pointer and other options and paddings. Let's look into each of these one by one. Source port. It is a 16-bit field which identifies the port of the sending application. Destination port. Destination port is also a 16-bit field which identifies the port of the receiving application. So the source port identifies the sender application's port and the destination port identifies the receiver application's port. 
So sequence number and acknowledgement number. Both of these are 32 bit field. A sequence number, uh, when a TCP assigns a unique sequence number to each byte of the data contained in the TCP segment. So the sequence number contains the sequence number of first data byte. While looking on the acknowledgement number, it contains the sequence number of the data that the receiver is expecting to receive from the sender. So it is always the sequence number of the last received data by incremented by one so that the receiver will receive the package in the correct order. The next segment is header length. Header length is a 4 bit field which contains the length of the TCP header. Thus, it helps in knowing from where the actual data begins. As we have seen previously, the data follows the header. Therefore, the knowing the length of the TCP header helps in knowing where the data begins. Reserve bits. There are 6 reserved bits and these bits are set to 0 by default. Moving on to TCP header flags, there are 6 control flags. Urge. It represents the urgent pointer. If it is set to 1, then the data is processed urgently. That is, the data is prioritized. Acknowledge. If the acknowledge bit is set to 0, then it means that the data packet does not contain an acknowledgement. Push. If this field is set, then it requires the receiving device to push the data to the receiving application without buffering it. Reset. If it is set, then it requires to restart the connection. Sin. It is used to establish a connection between the hosts. Fin. It is used to release the connection and no further data exchange will happen. Window size. Window size is a 16-bit field which contains the size of the receiving window of the sender. It advertises how much data the sender can receive without acknowledgement. Thus, the window size is used to for flow control. Checksum. Checksum is a 16-bit field used for error control. It verifies the integrity of the data in the TCP payload. The sender adds CRC checksum to the checksum field before sending the data. So CRC is nothing but cyclic redundancy check which is used to ensure the data integrity during transmission. It detects errors that may occur in the data and allows the receiver to verify the accuracy of the received information. Thus, it verifies the integrity of the data in the TCP payload. So if the CRC check fails, then the receiver rejects the data. Urgent pointer. It is a 16-bit field which indicates how much data in the current segment is urgent. Urgent pointer added to the sequence number indicates the end of the urgent data byte. This field is considered valid and evaluated only if the urgent bit or the urgent flag is set to 1. If it is not set, then the field is ignored options. So uh, we saw earlier that the header, uh, the size of the header ranges from 20 bytes to 40 bytes and the 40 bytes were for options. So the options is generally used for timestamp, window size, window size extension, parameter negotiation and padding. Timestamp. The timestamp option helps protect against wrapped sequence numbers which can happen while transmitting very large streams of data. That is, multiple segments having the same sequence number may appear at the receiver side. This makes it difficult for the receiver to identify the correct segment. If timestamp is used, then it marks the edge of the TCP segments. Based on the timestamp, receiver can identify the correct segment. Window size extension. Options field may be used to represent a greater window size than 16 bits. If the receiver wants to receive more data, it can advertise, advertise its greater window size using this field. The extra bits are then appended in the options field. 
the other two options of parameter negotiation and padding so consider an example during a connection establishment both sender and receiver have to specify the maximum segment size to specify maximum segment size there is no special field so they specify the maximum segment size using this field and they negotiate thus this option is called parameter negotiation padding padding is nothing but the addition of dummy data so this addition is to fill up the unused space in the transmission unit thus making it standard size so options field is used is also used for parameter negotiation and padding so that's it for today's video meet you in the next one thank you